Oi, Cabo Verde, terra estimada Terra de paz, terra de gozo I am George A. Castro, chairperson of the American Cape Verdean Cultural Exchange Commission. I introduced this commission back uh, in the early 90s here in the state of Rhode Island. It's the only commission in the United States of America, the American Cape Verdean Cultural Exchange Commission. It deals with the American Cape Verdean community here in the state of Rhode Island and Cape Verdean Americans. It talks about the culture, the history of what the Cape Verdeans have contributed to this state as well as the United States of America. It's an organization that's nonpartisan and it's by law. This is a commission and it has to go through the General Assembly in order to be effective and legal. We have uh, Norman Lincoln, Jim Vincent, George Lima, Representative Gordon Fox, Bella Texera, Anna Moniz, Alberto Pereira, Diane Vieira. There's no other commission in this country. We're the first one in the United States of America. All the commission members on there are appointed by the General Assembly, three from the House, three from the Senate, and three from the governor's office. One has to have some heritage within the Cape Verdean community, first, second, or third generation. We deal with all the organizations here in the state of Rhode Island and out of the state of Rhode Island. We deal with those people in the Republic of Cape Verde, uh, the ambassador, prime minister, and elected officials from Sao, uh, or from Praia, St. Vincent. We deal with not only the Republic of Cape Verde, but also the United States of America. It is highlighting the American Cape Verde community in a very positive way and what the American Cape Verdeans have contributed to this country and to the world. The state comes up with about $1,200. That's not much money. So we're looking to get some, maybe the right grants for us so we can do things and send some, maybe eventually send some people to the public of Cape Verde. Uh, also do some things in highlighting individuals, they're taking the funds and put them back into the community. We can go anywhere here in the state of Rhode Island and outside the state to uh, apply to them to get grants for our organization to do things in the community. We are working on that now, I'm trying to get our commissioners to be more actively involved to do this, to look to other resources besides the state. The organization has to go out and support itself. But the problem we have sometimes when we look with our hands out, welfare, that's not what it's all about. The Cape Verde community is not all about that. The Cape Verde community is a working community. The American Cape Verde community works hard, will work hard, and will achieve its goals, has achieved the goals. Unfortunately, no one's highlighted them. We're going to do research and show the people in this country and this state what the Cape Verde community has done. The first American Cape Verde elected in the House was Peter Coelho. Now, he made history, not only being in the House of Representatives, he was chair of a committee here, the Corporations Committee, highlight things like Peter Coelho or George Lima, besides being in the State House, maybe in business, teaching in school, the Longshoremen's Union, with Ambrose Mendes, Lopez, oh, so many other people out here have done things in this committee you wouldn't believe back in the 20s, during the Depression in the 40s, in the 50s, and what they contribute to going into war, and the service also. One of the greatest uh, professional boxers in Rhode Island, George Arujo, was a great artist. He was the first to have an exhibit at Rhode School of Design. You have Louis Lopes, who's outstanding with a program called Nobida TV locally here. Look at Davey Lopes, played in four World Series, was in five World Series, and managing a major league team. We've done a lot of things we've helped uh, different events throughout the state of Rhode Island. We had a lot of things we've done with the Cape Verdean Club here, uh, the organizations in Pawtucket and other organizations. We want to highlight more, also people. One of the largest events that we've ever done was Warwick Mall. We had so many people come in uh, to what we were doing at the Warwick Mall, highlighting. We had people entertaining, we had people talking about the history, and we had people who were artists like Danny Lima who had an exhibit there. Bring the people to Brown University, and we may even go to URI eventually, maybe Rhode Island College, CCRI, but to bring them there and come up with different ideas and plans. And it's not a one-man or one-woman show. The American Cape Verde Culture Exchange Commission. We're going to be sending more information to of the Prime Minister as well as the President and also the different mayors of different cities there in the Republic of Cape Verde to make them conscious of uh, what we're doing, what we've been doing. And we're really going to take this on a road, uh, a very positive road, and let people know about the American and Cape Verdean culture 
uh, what's taking place, what has been taking place has been historical. If there are any American Cape Verdeans, first, second, third, fourth generation, in the different states, for instance, like Massachusetts or Connecticut, and we may go to Georgia, we may go to Alabama, we may go to California, well, throughout the country we'll go, New Hampshire, Vermont, whatever, and just make them conscious. This will make people aware you'd be shocked of what has started with American Cape Verdeans and Cape Verdean Americans. This is a number one commission, and we hope we'll go cross country and hope that the rest of the states will also pick up and develop the same type of commission, and we hope eventually you go right to Cape Verde with it. Highlighting, working, and exposing to the public what the American Cape Verde community has done and the Cape Verde American community has done to contribute to not only to the state, but to this country. We're going to start raising the flag.